for the last couple of weeks. After a month of rapid Ukrainian advances, it looks like the front lines have mainly stabilized. And instead of actually advancing, the Russians apparently spend most of their time directing explosive drones into civilian areas. Nonetheless, in mid-October, the Ukrainians asked for a media blackout around Kurzon. And in the last couple of days, Russian occupying authorities in Kurzon city have begun to evacuate the city in anticipation of a large-scale Ukrainian offensive. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the looming battle for Kurzon, how it might pan out, and what it could mean for the trajectory of the war going forward, as well as any potential peace negotiations. So before we get into the most recent developments, a bit of context. Kurzon city is the regional capital of the Kurzon Oblast, and it was captured by the Russians in early March. The city had a pre-war population of about 300,000 people, and it was the largest city and the only regional capital to be captured by the Russians since the invasion began in late February. For the first few months, Kurzon was pretty much under total Russian control, save for a bit of partisan activity. However, thanks to recent Ukrainian advances and the arrival of long-range HIMARS systems, since July, Ukrainian artillery has been able to reach the city. And this is particularly bad news for the Russians, because there are basically two crossings from Kurzon city, which is on the west bank of the Dnipro River, over to the Russian-occupied territory on the east bank of the Dnipro. These two crossings are the Antonovsky Bridge, which lies on the outskirts of Kurzon, and the Novokokova Dam, which lies about 60 kilometers upstream of Kurzon city. Now, while there are other crossings, these are the only two capable of carrying significant volumes of military hardware, which is why the Ukrainians have been shelling both of them constantly for the last few months. Now, the Russians have tried to repair the Novokokova Dam and replace the Antonovsky Bridge with a combination of a pontoon bridge and a regular ferry service. But it's clear that neither crossing has the capacity it once did. And that means that the 20,000 or so Russian troops currently in Kurzon city and the surrounding areas on the west side of the Dnipro aren't really able to retreat, at least not quickly. So this has led to some speculation that the Ukrainians are going to try to essentially stage a siege on Kurzon, attacking from the west while cutting off Russia's supply lines over the Dnipro. And things do seem to have come to a head recently, after the Ukrainians made significant advances a couple of weeks ago. As we detailed in our previous video, in early October, Ukrainian forces broke through the Russian front lines and started making rapid progress along the Dnipro. Russian forces did try to regroup, but were forced to retreat even further along the river and instead set up new defensive lines, effectively ceding over a thousand square kilometers of territory. And this is where the front lines stabilized for the last couple of weeks or so. And it looks like the Ukrainians have been using that time to prepare for yet another offensive. Now, on Sunday, the Ukrainians announced an operational silence, requesting that journalists and the media refrain from posting anything related to Kurzon for intelligence reasons. Obviously, because of that media blackout, we don't know what's happened on the ground. But the Russians seem to think that the Ukrainians have been amassing more troops around Kurzon in preparation for a full-on assault on Kurzon city. In fact, on Wednesday, Putin declared martial law in the four recently annexed territories of Donetsk, Kurzon, Luhansk, and Zaporizhia, granting the occupying authorities emergency powers. And more pertinent to this story, authorities in Kurzon used these powers to organize a mass evacuation of the 60,000 civilians who remain in the city. Locals received an emergency text warning them that Ukrainian forces would be shelling residential areas and that buses would be departing from the river port over the pontoon bridge to the east side of the Dnipro. 
Now, it's unclear where these civilians are actually moving to and to what extent they consented to moving. But the appointed mayor of Kurzan said that civilians will be given safe passage deeper into Russia. It's also worth saying that while the Russians claim that this is a humanitarian evacuation, the Ukrainians believe that the Russians are only evacuating the city in preparation for a scorched earth bombing campaign for when the Ukrainians eventually recapture the city. Regardless though, Russian commanders have been sounding increasingly pessimistic about Russia's chances of holding on to Kurzan. Russia's new commander-in-chief told Russia's main news agency on Tuesday that it would be very difficult for the Russians to hold on to Kurzan, and claimed that the Ukrainians were planning on using, quote, banned weapons. The Russians have also claimed that the Ukrainians are planning to blow up the aforementioned Novokokova Dam itself. And if true, that's a major departure, because while the Ukrainians have been shelling the road bridges on either side of the dam, they've so far avoided shelling the dam itself. According to the Russians, though, the Ukrainians are about to change strategy, with them claiming that the Ukrainians want to blow up the dam to cause a massive downstream flood, including around Kurzan, apparently in order to wipe out the Russian troops. Now, these Russian reports have sparked some anxiety in both Ukraine and the West more generally that the Russians are preparing a false flag operation at the dam. In a video call with European leaders on Thursday, Zelensky warned that Ukrainian intelligence had found evidence that Russian engineers had already mined the dam and were preparing to blow it up once the Ukrainians reached Kurzan. And that wouldn't be all too surprising, because the Russians have some form in this respect. In mid-September, Russian cruise missiles blew up a different dam, causing extensive flooding in the area. If this was to happen in Kurzan too, it would be truly catastrophic. Blowing up the dam wouldn't just flood Kurzan city, but also another 80 or so Ukrainian settlements, mostly on the east side of the Dnipro putting tens of thousands of lives at risk. And worryingly, Russian forces have apparently started retreating from the Zaporizhia power plant, which is exactly what they do if they're about to blow up the dam, because without the dam, it might be difficult to cool the nuclear reactors, which use water from the reservoir. Now, hopefully all of this is just a bluff. The Ukrainians have little reason to blow up the dam, given that it would flood the city that they're currently trying to recapture. And even if the Russians thought that blowing up the dam would deter the Ukrainian advance, it would still be pretty terrible news for them as well. For starters, the subsequent flooding would disproportionately affect Russian-occupied settlements on the east side of the Dnipro. But flooding the dam would also cut off Crimea's water supply. That's because Crimea relies on the North Crimean Canal, a small offshoot from the main reservoir, for something like 80% of their fresh water. If the main dam were destroyed, the water level would fall below the canal's required level, which clearly wouldn't be good for the Russian-occupied region. Anyway, you get the idea. The stage is currently set for a much-anticipated battle for Kurzan. Now, if no one blows up the dam and the Ukrainians succeed, as even some Russians are expecting, it'll be interesting to see how Russia reacts to all of this. On Wednesday, Putin's spokesperson told reporters that all annexed territories are, quote, an inseparable part of Russia, which does open up the door to nuclear strikes under Russia's military doctrine. Although it's worth saying that it's not clear how much of Kurzan Russia actually claims. That's because on October 3rd, Peskov admitted that Russia didn't actually know where its borders were, saying that we'll continue to consult with the local populations. Ultimately, though, this ambiguity is almost more dangerous because well, we just don't know how Putin will respond if Ukraine does retake Kurzan in the coming days. These next few days and the decisions made are clearly very important then. And if you feel like you personally could be better at decision making, even on a much smaller scale, then so thank you.